Hello and welcome to the Top Order Podcast. Stu and Baldy here with another midweek IPL report. We'll hit on CSK versus KKR, Sunrisers versus Punjab Kings, and the latest match between the Rajasthan Royals and the Gujarat Titans. All coming up right after this. Silic Baldy, no. Swish this week, just podcast, podcast alert. There's no extra technology this week. Just me and you <laughs> talking cricket. I know, but it sort of feels like we sort of still have to say all coming up right after this because that's just what we do. So it's sort of yeah, fair enough. Part part of our part of our shtick now, I guess. But uh, have look- I broken your ordinarily <laughs> slick introduction by messing with the way that you do it? No, absolutely not. It's quite good for the for the podcast or to, for the listeners to kind of see behind the scenes sometimes. But but look look, Baldy, we're here. I guess a few days removed from us doing our power rankings and. Talking about KKR and Rajasthan as unbeaten teams that were looking invincible and me bumping CSK down the power rankings, worried about bowling depth, that if Fizz and Patirana were, were going to miss some time. We've got three games to talk about and a couple mm. of them were last over thrillers, but I think I would like to start in Chennai because maybe it looks like I didn't need to be worried about CSK at all. I mean, I want to steal the words of Harsha Bogle here and say, once again, Chen and I have invited guests into their home and served an unpalatable meal. Yeah, Harsha <laughs> Bogle always knows how to turn a phrase, doesn't he? Look, you and I have had a reasonably poor week as far as predictions go. Nothing unusual there, but there <laughs> have been uh, a few things, a few bits of fish and chip paper to walk back uh, over the course of the next 20 minutes or so. So let's start with the... Let's start with the Chennai game, shall we? Uh, so that was KKR, Chennai. KKR were flying high. Chennai were in trouble. Um, but we do have to kind of dive into that and have a look at the result and have a look at the record for Chennai now at home. So they're 3-0 and at home, and I believe they're 0-2 either at neutral venues, i.e. Vizag uh, and or away. Mm. Um, and overall, you know, that paints a picture of both Chennai's ability to, to be strong at home as they have been for, for quite some time now. Uh, but also, I think, the overall dominance that we haven't really touched on yet in the pod, this this IPL, that home teams are far and away the successor in terms of uh, the results so far in the IPL. So what, we're 23, 24 games in, something like that. I think we're 24 games in at the moment as at time of recording. And the home teams have a at least 16 to 5, if not better record. I might be missing one game here in my, in my notes. But they are overwhelmingly the majority favourite to mm. the point where it's almost, you know, an 80% home winning record. And when we look at other sports, that the, the the home and away record isn't nearly so so drastic. So it's it's a case of I think we haven't really dived a, a layer deeper into an, our analysis yet. And we will do going forward around, you know, some of these runs of games. It's not just who you play, but where you play them. And so Chennai have come home. They've got big win on the board. And their season all of a sudden looks back on track. And some of these other games that we'll talk about, have they opened up the door for some of these other teams like Mumbai and maybe to a lesser extent Rajasthan, although Rajasthan has still got that one and four record. Rajasthan's, let's have a look at their home record. So their home record is, uh, not Rajasthan, sorry, RCB. Mm. I think they've only played a couple of games at home. I might have I might have missed an RCB game, but yeah, they've they've lost both of their away games. They've won a game at home. They might have lost one at home too. Um, mm. So it's yeah, it's look, really one of those interesting ones, isn't it? I I mean I think like you, you touched on it there. The 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 way that these three results went uh, in these games, it, it's it's made for a very congested table. And uh, you know we yeah we touched on before how uh, that we we those two teams that were flying high at the top and unbeaten suddenly all it takes is one game to flip things around. And I, look, I don't think there's huge concerns for, for necessarily for either of those two teams. But what it does do is it boosts up everyone. And now you've got Mumbai and RCB playing tonight, New Zealand time here overnight. And that, you know, is a massive game because it means that one of those teams gets probably within one game of six points. And then there, you know, there's five teams on six points currently at the moment. So yeah, definitely opens the door for, for those guys to go back in. You touched a little bit on, on uh, home home performances, and, and I think for CSK, obviously that means sometimes a, a more spin-friendly uh, environment. And I think the big thing probably for them that I would be most pleased about this particular performance about KKR is the fact that Jadeja picked up wickets because 
I think I said in the power, uh, you know, in the power rankings that he only had one wicket from four games, and and I think they really need for their attack to be balanced out. When you know, especially when uh, you know they don't have both of Patirana and Mr. Mustafiza, they need uh, both Jadeja and Thikshana or a combination of them both to be picking up wickets to chip in with the wickets to make that attack a threat in kind of all forms of the innings and in all phases because. Yeah, and, and the way that he went about things, I mean, yes, it's going to be more like that in in uh, Chennai, but I think what we saw maybe all week is that it seems like to me that spin is starting to have more of an impact on this tournament. Well, certainly Chennai took advantage of the conditions at home, and it wasn't just Jadeja that picked up wickets, but also uh, Deshpande chipped in and picked up wickets as well. Um, you know, you got a little bit out of Thikshana, you got a little bit out of Mustafa Zoo. It's not just the how many, though, Stu, it's the who, right? So mm. Jadeja took Nareen, Raghavanshi, and Venkatesh Iyer out, so three of the top five. And then uh, Thikshana got Ramandeep Singh, but Deshpande got the dangerous Phil Salt, first cherry and gone. He got Rinku Singh, and he got Dre Russ. So those three guys outside of the the big names that we were talking about, um, have all chipped in and got wickets, but also got important wickets. They haven't just come in and burgled the tail at the end um, and got sort of 9-10 jack, but they've got the, the big wickets up the top. And, and that's, I think, the most impressive thing out of the CSK win is that they took an informed Kolkata batting night, uh, Kolkata Knight Riders batting lineup and took them down. Only made 137 for nine. And it wasn't quite the cakewalk in the chase, but, you know, it felt like Chennai were pretty much under control all the way home, got it in the 18th over, no dramas, let's move on. Yeah, I think so for Chennai. You, you're pretty happy. Um, I mean, there'd been a lot of pressure on Guy Quad to to kind of uh, maybe score at a quicker pace. He didn't really need to in this innings, and I think probably the perfect situation for him in, in terms of having no strike rate pressure, he could just bat. No, he didn't really solve his strike rate uh, you know, worries there, but he's been able to put those runs on the board. And I think for, for them and for Chennai going forward, he's hopefully going to be, you know, more feeling more confident about himself. And, and you know, he's going to have to be a, a key contributor to, to what they do with the bat. So, yeah, I think that'll pay off nicely for him. And, and I mean, just Shivan Dubé, the way he's able to come in and, you know, it feels like a long time since I started wondering whether he was actually a good player. He I mean, I've just completely come 360 on him and his power. Is just is such an, an asset for hit for for Chennai and and for any team that he's in. If uh, if we're talking about maybe a possible India spot for for that T Twenty World Cup for KKR though, Baldy, do, do they just chalk this off as as a bad day at the office when the batting didn't come off and, and move on? They could. I think we're still papering over the Mitchell start crack. So if we have a look, he bowled three overs, no wickets for twenty nine. I think at the moment, I think he's still only got one wicket in the tournament, maybe, if I'm right. Two, I think. Two. Two. Okay, so that's it's very, very expensive uh, average-wise for Mitchell Stark. So that is, I think, the concern is that we haven't seen him turn the corner yet. Um, other than that, their bowling was pretty economical, you know, up and down uh, 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 other than Anakal Roy. But... It doesn't tell the story, right? And if you're only defending 140, you've got to take wickets. You've got to take wickets early in the power play. And they didn't really do that other than the Ravindra dismissal. Uh, it wasn't really any penetration from those those bowlers. And look, I keep saying that Mitchell Stark's going to come round. I still believe that he will. Uh, but he needs to start delivering wickets. He needs to start delivering results for his team as some of the batters have delivered so far for KKR if they're going to be an all-rounding... Uh, a team with, you know, that all-round capability to win on either side of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still, uh, you know, we've had we had a couple of comments on our last video about uh, surprise, showing surprise, I guess, in in our uh, in our maybe hesitation to to uh, I guess announce that KKR's bowling lineup that we feel confident in it. But yeah, I, I still do have concerns. Uh, you know, we'll see as, as time goes on the next couple of games, but. Yeah, it'll be interesting for them because, yeah, if Stark doesn't come good, I, I do think that although they have a lot of contributors, they don't really have, you know, the the absolute locked-in bowler who can pick, who you know is going to pick up wickets every game and who you know is going to be really, really consistent. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a concern for them. 
I, I think when if we move on to before we move on to the next game, which is uh, was Sunrisers versus Punjab, I just want to ask you: Did you see? Uh, there's been a bit of a few clips going around of um, Ravindra Jadeja faking to go in ahead of uh, MS Dhoni when when there was about three runs to get for for CSK. And uh, the whole crowd kind of reacting there in Chennai. It's, it's so brilliant because uh, you could even see when MS walks out, uh, Andre Russell had to put his hands over his ears because it, it's just so loud. I just love how much they love MS Dhoni over there. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, he could do no wrong, MS Dhoni. Dropped a catch in this game too, actually. Yeah, it's, quite it's an easy been... one, I think. bit lazy. Yeah, I, I'm loathe to criticise Emma Stoney. Um, <laughs> see, the, see the comments just rolling in. Well, look, he's done so much good over the years. Like if you <laughs> if you picked on him for that one for that one miss, you, you know you feel like a, a a bit of a nitpicker. But I just I just wonder like what what are CSK going to get out of Emma Stoney consistently in big games for the rest of the season. We've seen him do tremendous things over the course of his career. We've seen him do tremendous things this season. Is he going to give us a, you know, Jordan-like performance when it comes to the big games in the back end of the season? You wouldn't bet against him, but there are just little things that are starting to appear in his game that make you wonder. I'm not sure what we're going to get from Emma Stoney moving forward, but I really hope we get a vintage command performance uh, in one of those uh, big games in the back end of the season for CSK because they're going to need him at some point to win them a game I think semi-final or final I think they're going to get a moment from him you know what I feel about I I, I feel he's got a lot to offer with the bat with those big guns at the moment but uh, let's move on to uh, the Sunrisers game versus Punjab for for now because we've got a couple of big uh, a couple of last over thrillers really to talk about and uh, this this was an interesting game I guess going into it for me because it was a couple of teams that were sitting in that middle pack on the table. You know, this was a chance for, we keep saying it's very early in the tournament, but also, you know, it was a chance for one side to kind of put themselves in the positives on the win chart. And I guess for the Sunrisers, especially a team I sort of follow reasonably closely, it was a, I think it was another opportunity for them, especially to just find some consistency. And I'm not quite sure that they did that, to be quite honest, but they did pick up the two points, and I think encouragingly, after heaps and heaps of the comments from from us and and uh, from you know all the people commenting, I guess around the sunrises I th- that have really just focused on the overseas players, I think they'll be massively pleased with the contribution they got from the the local Indian players. You know, when you look at Kumar Reddy and and contributions from Abdul Samad and then the bowlers. So yeah, I'm very very happy. I think if you're you're coming out of this game. As a Sunrisers fan, you know, even though we might talk about kind of the last couple of overs, I think you're mm. pretty happy with how this went in terms of the contributions you got from those players. A win is a win is a win at this point. And with so much movement in the middle of that table, you know, it, it was described to me midweek as a, a topsy-turvy labyrinth of mystery and intrigue, that, <laughs> that middle of the of the IPL table, everywhere from sort of Punjab to look now teams are taking points off each other big time this mm-hmm. weekend and it happens again in the Gujarat Rajasthan game. So, mm-hmm. you know, those teams are like it or not keeping Mumbai and uh, RCB and even Delhi alive, you know. Those guys are now only uh, two games off of off of second, really. You know, if you think about it in 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 terms of Kolkata are now second in sixth place. Uh, sorry. Yeah, second second with six points, I should say. Uh, it's yeah. been a long day, Stu. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Mumbai, RCB and Delhi are, are on two points and they're only two points. Uh, they're only two wins, four points off of uh, off of those top spots. I'm going to stop talking about numbers and start talking about feel. <laughs> this was an exciting game. Uh, it was a big game for both teams. Sunrisers needed the win if they were going to keep their, their aspirations on track. A gutting loss for Punjab who now run into some big sides in the next sort of Slater game. So that was really one that they, if they were going to make a run, um, you, you think they probably needed that one. They're one and three from their last four games. And I think that's probably about what we'd expect for them on paper uh, in terms of wins and losses, right? Yeah, I think so. P- Punjab has been a really fascinating side for me this year because they've been a chance in just about all of their games. And, and mm. uh, you know, they find themselves, as you say, two wins and, and three losses. They won by three runs against Delhi. They lost in the final over to RCB. They 
They lost by 21, sort of relatively convincingly against LSG, but they beat Gujarat with the ball to spare and obviously lost this one just by the two runs. And yeah, they're just a, you know, a side that is managing to stay in the game in all of these games when I actually thought they were kind of out of it in a lot of these contests. And, and that probably comes on to something I know that you're quite keen to talk about in, in uh, during this chat at some point and, and just the way that both these last two games that we're going to talk about kind of played out. I think if you, what I've been fascinated and, and impressed by in these last couple of games, especially is just the way that sides are able to hit the accelerator so well now, you know, like even in the, um, the Sunrisers innings, they were on 66 for four after 10 overs. Kumar Reddy's there on 14 after 17 balls. Even, you know, Harshal Patel gets class and, make, and it's 100, 100 for five in the 14th over. But then they just go, you know, Reddy goes, you know, reverse sweeps bra, you know, smashes another one over, over mid-wicket for six. Next ball, he's dropped by Shashank Singh, but then he deposits another one into the stands, you know, and contributions from Abdul Samad. Unad mm. hits the final ball for six, which, you know, could have been a catch, which obviously... <laughs> Huge, you know, huge moment, huge, yeah. huge moment in the context of that game. That get that catch gets taken. We've talked about the quality of catching in the IPL so far this season. That catch gets taken, and it's two points for the opposition. Point jab, get two points, and and it's just fine margins, absolutely fine margins in the IPL this year. And you know, catching has become a real source of differentiation or, or big moments, turning points in in most of these games. Totally. And I mean, you know, amazingly, then you go to the um, the Punjab innings and, uh, you know, they started really shaky. Boovy gets a, Boovy starts with a maiden. Cummins gets Bairstow in the second over. Boovy gets Prubson run in the third over, you know, thanks to a, a, another good catch. Shikar in the fifth. And, you know, Binksy would have loved that stumping from Klaassen, by the way. I'm, I'm sure that was that was real quality from from him. But, they're you know, they're 23 for two or 27 for three after the power play. And, you know, amazingly, they ended up sixty-six for four, for uh, for four as well off their their ten overs. So exactly the same spot as Sunrisers were. I think by the time Unadkat got Sikandar Raza, they needed ninety-two from forty-one balls. And you know, I look at that and go, like, that's over. That, the game is over in my head. But just nothing feels like it's safe anymore, Baldy. Nothing. Nothing is safe. And it's and it's such fine margins for bowlers, as we've talked about, in terms of executing their skill set. If you don't get it right, you go to the boundary. And it's it's just fascinating to watch, uh, regardless of whether or not it's your favourite brand of cricket. It's just so entertaining to see batters accessing all these areas, being able to just bat fearlessly, absolutely fearlessly, and be able to execute their skills uh, so perfectly, it would seem, uh, in the back end of these matches. And, you know, you have to look at the the performances from from Shashank Singh, Jitesh Sharma, Ashutosh Sharma. In the back end of this game, we took uh, looked at Romario Shepherds, you know, what, 48 from the last over of, of, of his innings. It wasn't that quite that many, but I'm, it's I've, felt, I've, it's I've, felt like it. I've stopped talking about real numbers now because they're because <laughs> they're they're just they're just not working for me today. I'll talk about feel. Um, but it just it just feels like these guys just can just can hit the ball anywhere. And and you're right, no chase is safe, no lead is safe anymore in the IPL. Uh, it's just fascinating to watch. And you, you just got to play every you've got to play to the last ball. I mean, even this game that we're talking about, Punjab needed nine, and uh, Ashutosh is still still going for it. You know, hit the six off the last ball just in case it was a a noe, you know, just in case you you got an extra chance. So yeah, fine margins, but just e- extraordinary skills. Uh, before I hand back to you, Stu, again, uh, probably shouldn't be owning up to uh, a bad call, but we did give Harpreet Bra uh, some praise mm. on Monday. Uh, he went for forty eight off his four overs. We were talking about his economy rate and and got spanked. So I'm not going to give any more players uh, praise. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to comment on what I see in front of me and talk about how wonderful it all is. But as soon as I give teams praise or, or say that they're in a hole, they completely uh, prove me wrong. Uh, so <laughs> so there you go. Monday's fish and chip paper uh, has now come back to bite me. I think Harpreet Bra could still be pretty happy with with how he bowled. There are a couple of, yeah, as I said before, a couple of brilliant shots 
played off of him. And, and you know, mm. you mentioned the two before, Ashutosh and um, Shashank Sharma. I mean, doing it again, I think that's... I, I sort of feel like the, the players, in particular, obviously, we don't see all of, uh, you know, the local Indian scene. So we don't... Some of these names end up being quite new to us. On And, you know, when you see someone like Shashank Sharma come in and, and do what he did in the previous game for, for Punjab and, and, you know, get them across the line, you sort of... Like, okay, cool. That's amazing. What a cool story. Can they do it again? And for, for him and Ashutosh to, to do the exact same thing just mm. about again, mm. you know, needing, uh, you know, when Ashutosh came to the crease, they needed 69 off 27 balls and, you know, 29 off that last over. And to get that close, I mean, although to be fair, Ashutosh must have some kind of magic on the cricket ball so that no one could catch him. That last over, you know, dropped for six, wide, wide, dropped for another six, dropped mm. again, second to last ball. And then, yes, I think Shashank it was that hit the hit the last ball miles for another six. But yeah, it just doesn't change. Didn't change the result, but amazing, amazing to watch. He has been to the Minus Labashane school of how not to get caught, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, Ashutosh Sharma. There's very, very few that have that have been to that school, but it's a great finishing school for, for, for batters. Do we have anything else on that game other than the fact that we – I think we've talked about the, the fact that these games are keeping teams at the bottom of the ladder, at least, in with a sniff so far. Um, and, and no chase is safe anymore. But I, I want to talk about this next – this next game on our slate, because I, I want to throw it over to you, Stu. Gujarat. We slammed them in the power rankings. I was not, I wasn't incredulous, but I was kind of with you in that they were in a bit of a hole. They didn't look like they were a side that was in great form. Are they back? Well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think they're back. I mean, you know, I, 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 I think there are still some of the signs that we were worried about in the, you know, in the previous conversation that we had around them. I think some of those still exist. I mean, you know, we even just look at their batting lineup and the way that things, you know, the way that things went. Obviously, it went pretty well right at the end there, and, and they get across the line. But I think you you could see that the 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 challenges that their middle order has without David Miller, you know, in terms of trying to build that innings after you know Gill and, and Sudarsan, uh, you know, go. Even though the the two of them are setting up really nice platforms. Mm. They brought in Matthew Wade, you know, that didn't really pay off behind the stumps or, you know, with the, with the bat, he, you know, dropped a dropped a couple of catches there in the end as well. But I think it's a, you know, it is a massive win for them because as you, we've touched on heaps, the, the table is so bunched now, you know, you reverse that and suddenly they're two wins from six matches and really chasing those teams on the ladder. Now they're three and three, their next three games are Delhi, Punjab and Delhi all games that they might go into as favourites. So, you know, it mm. really, really does help their chances in this tournament. And, and I think, you know, probably the, the guy I want to highlight is, is Rashid Khan because it was uh, he was another one that had had a lot of questions around him, mm -hmm. you know, leading into this game. People are worried about his uh, performances in the power play, the way he's being used, the way that uh, Noor Ahmed had been kind of, you know, uh, outshining him, I think, so far. Uh, in this this version of the tournament as as Gujarat's spinner, but what a superb day for him with bat and ball. Fantastic! It, 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 it's it feels like these players are listening to our pod <laughs> and, and taking it all on board, and just going, "Yeah, I've heard what Stu said. I've heard what Baldy said. I've heard what Binksy <laughs> said. I've heard what Jeeves said. I'm going to take that on board, and I'm going to show them just how good a cricketer I am." Because we got the full. We got the full Rashid Khan experience. Other than the four or five wickets in a bag, we got the full Rashid Khan experience in this game. Um, but if you have a look at it, though, halfway through, Rajasthan, were, I'm sure, were very, very happy with the score oh, yeah. that they put on the board. Everything was going to plan. We got a, uh, we got a Sanju Sampson, you know, 180-plus strike rate. We got runs again from Rian Parag. You know, we got a little bit of finishing from Shimron Hetmeyer, 196 for three. Again, ostensibly... Last year, year before, year before that, 196 is a pretty safe score. Looks good, right? But even if you have a look at the Gujarat scorecard, it doesn't look great. It doesn't make for great reading. But the strike rates are there, and you've got a big contribution from Shubman Gill, 72 off 44, and all of a sudden they've chased down 196 off the last ball. And, yeah, I mean, like you say, no chase is safe. It's just, it, yeah, it, just, it just beggars belief. Let's talk a little bit of. I, I'm keen to talk a little bit about that the Rajasthan batting because yeah, that you know um, Rashid Khan gets 
Joss Butler, it, it looked for a minute there like Jaiswell might, you know, get going, but then he gets out. Mm. But then Samson and, and Parag, who, you know, I, I keep talking, you know, Parag probably is the story more than Samson because, you know, the way that he's kind of, you know, I mean, he's making up for the fact that, that Jaiswell really isn't contributing. And, and uh, you know, I guess it's in a way, apart from that 100, it's been a similar story for Butler, but Parag is making up for that with the way that he's, you know, be, not just putting in every now and again performances. He's been super consistent so far. But I just love watching Sanju Sampson bat. Honestly, I've mentioned it a few times. I know that. Mm. But I just hope this season is the one that it, it clicks for him and he's just up near the top of those run charts. He hit one over cover off Mohit that, that went one bounce forward. It was, it's one of those shots where, you know, you, you're watching it home alone and, and you just find yourself making it, like these involuntary noises of joy because it's just like... <laughs> Oh, what is you know what has happened here? And uh, you know, played another one off Spencer Johnson later, lapped him for six, for four as well. He is just a great, great watch. And yeah, I you know I love the way that they went about that batting innings because they again were I think they were only on seventy odd after their ten overs, and mm. they were just able to accelerate. And you know, Rian Parag even it was a I mean brilliant catch to get him on the boundary balance to to take that catch. I think that was. VJ Shankar down there, you know, picked up 19 off the last over. You can't be, you're pretty stoked with how that's going. But yeah, mm. as you say, like, what do you think went wrong for them in the bowling, I guess? Because they were in control of that game, I would say. Absolutely. But but no chase is safe anymore. So yeah, it it's it's one of those things. I think they've just got to look at it and go, look, okay, they, they chased a good score. Shubman Gill played well. The the only thing that concerns me, I think, a little bit if I'm if I'm Rajasthan, and I think I've got my stats right here. I'm sure viewers will correct me and listeners will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Rajasthan have played five games at home so far. They're three and two. They're the only team with multiple losses at home. Um, yes, they've won a game away. Uh, they haven't lost away, sure, but the the two losses I think is a little bit concerning for them. They're going to have to go on the road and play at some point in this tournament, and you know, up until now. Uh, road wins have been few and far between. So they've really got to maximise their their returns at home. That would be the only thing that would be concerning for me. Uh, but Gujarat, are they back? Who knows? Who knows? We, we, we won't. I mean, I think they've got a little bit of a break, actually, for for a couple of days. They don't have another game for a, a little while yet. I'm just looking at the Yeah, the and, then, and then, they, as I said before, they've got three games that they they might, they might would look at and feel feel winnable. So, yeah, the, mm. next, the next run for them is a real opportunity I do, I do think Rajasthan are going to look back at this game I mean we I guess we've talked about it in, in terms of international cricket as well I don't know that these players necessarily do look back at, at and analyze the things that went wrong not not that they I don't mean that they don't go back and and think of ways that they can get better but I don't know that they get hung up on it maybe the way that we sort of do it as you know analysts I will call us analysts but you know I think that when I look at that, how that game played out, Trent Bolt, two overs for eight up front and then just doesn't bowl again. I, I mean, I really think, well, one, maybe he's going so well that you just bowl him three in that power play and then you bring on, you know, your your uh, spinners during that um, during the middle period. They obviously brought Kishav Maharaj in as an impact player and, yeah, he, he only bowls two overs for 16 as well. But... I really think that they'll look back at that and think Bolt should have bowled that 17th over instead of Ashwin. And, mm. you know, I, I uh, we've all talked about how Trent Bolt has had his struggles at the death at times. He's certainly, in my opinion, a much better bowler up, up the front of the innings when the ball is moving around. But I think you've got to know that and make use of it and still think he can come back and, you know, maybe he doesn't bowl your last over. I think there probably would have been some kind of conversation about, you know, there's the last over, it's 15 runs, does do, does Bolt bowl this? But, you know, Avish Khan had just bowled a, an over a couple of, before that, the 18th, I think it was, that went for seven, put, picked up a wicket. I think he, mm. you know, he kind of earned the right to, to bowl that over with his performance in this game and in, in the game before when he's did done the job as well. But, yeah, I think they will look back and think, gee, we probably could have got a cheapish over from Bolt in there somewhere. And managed to pick up the, you know, pick up yeah, the win. Could have been, I mean, could have been the difference. And you know, we've talked about Ashwin and Chahal being great weapons for them from an economy perspective. On Monday, on Wednesday night, 
they they went for 83 off their eight overs, went over 10s between them. Yeah, they got two wickets, but they, they went at over 10s. So, look, mm. some days you're a rooster, some days you're a feather duster, unfortunately. <laughs> and and some of these guys who have been, you know, performance, performers that teams have backed going into these games haven't performed over the last couple of days. And, you know, that's that's cricket and that's life. Yeah, totally, totally. And, um, yeah, look, I, and I think, uh, you know, just a shout-out, I guess, to finish – Shout out a couple of those Gujarat players. I, I think, uh, you know, Shubman Gill again getting another 50 there. Uh, I think he'll be well in contention for Raj's turquoise cap for, for the best six. Again, he hit an, an, another nice one. Even got a, a holy schmoly out of Danny Morrison, which, uh, you know, we haven't heard much of Danny at the IPL at this point, but it's not really the IPL and uh, an IPL party unless Danny's there, is it? So, you and know. you don't often hear holy schmoly from <laughs> it, from any professional commentator, <laughs> let alone amateur ones. So it, mu- it must have been some strike. Just before we close off the pod, Stu, I just want to have a look at this next slate of games because we talked about teams being in contention and still being within t- touching distance of the top four, top six. Mumbai play RCB tonight at the Wankere. Huge game for both of those teams. One of these teams will have their season effectively end mm. at, tonight, I think. Almost um, feels like that. Yeah, last it, chance. It really, feels like, it really feels like that. I mean, Mumbai play Chennai again on the 15th and RCB play again on the 16th. But by then, it, it could almost be too late. So, you know, for those two teams in particular, tonight's game, it almost feels like a quarterfinal to me. If they lose this, they go to one and five and, you know, to, to reel off, what, eight straight or seven out of eight to get to the finals would be a gargantuan performance to get themselves back into the back into the series. Delhi play uh, on Saturday night against Looknow. I think if they're going to... If they're going to be a chance to play finals, they're going to have to win that game away. They've also got Gujarat away on the 18th. So their next two games are both away, both must-win games for them. So really, they're pushing the proverbial uphill, aren't they, in terms of, you know, they're, they're having having to win away from home. Um, but Lucknow also have a bit of a, an opportunity here. They've got kind of back-to-back games. Uh, if I look at the schedule correctly, they've got Delhi at home. And then the following match... The following night, they've got KKR away at Eden Gardens. So they're, they're going to be two big games for look now. They're, they look like a good cricket side at the moment, but they could easily drop one or both of those games and find themselves you know, r- right in the middle of that pack uh, going forward. So, yeah, look, a fascinating slate of games coming up this weekend. Rajasthan can get themselves back on track with a win over Punjab. Uh, and then Monday night, just as we record our power rankings, it's going to be Mumbai and Chennai uh, again at the Wankhede. So Mumbai have got two games at home to get their season uh, back on track. So, yeah, a fascinating slate of games again coming up over the weekend. Yeah, it does feel like those those power rankings are going to be all shook up again by the by the time we record next. The, the last person I was going to shout out before you, you went through those was Rahul Tawatia because I, I do think he deserves... He he's going to be the one that's kind of lost, I guess, in terms of the names of you know this is this was Rashid Khan's day, but mm. Tawati is Tawati is little knock there of uh, I think strike rate of two hundred twenty odd twenty odd you know so crucial to to getting them across the line. But Baldy, I think we've probably done our dash now for the day. We've kind of yeah gone through those those last three days of of games and and as you said, just it really does feel like I mean. It feels to me like I'm hyping every single thing up, but it starts to feel, it really does have that feel about it, that every game in this tournament, because all the teams are are so evenly matched, I think that, you know, it can swing, a couple of these games just swings the table so much and is making it quite challenging, I think, this week, especially for for how I'm going to rank all these sides. So we'll leave it there for for tonight. Everyone enjoy Mumbai versus RCB, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again on Monday.